In this video, we're gonna take a look at a gray ink by Mont Blanc, 90 years gray. Now, as always, there's timestamps down below so you can skip around, but if you've got the time, I'd appreciate you checking out the entire video. Also, down in the description is a link to a playlist for all of the gray inks that are here on the channel. Hi, I'm Adam, and I'm an ink guy. Let's get into the first writing sample, 90 GSM, Claire Fontaine. No bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade. It's really very dark there. The extra fine is just a tad lighter than the stub. With no feather spread, halo sheen, I'm not seeing any shading, eight seconds to dry. Medium is a little bit lighter than the extra fine. With no feather spread, halo sheen, it does shade. Brown goes darker to lighter to darker. Fox goes lighter to darker. Jumps goes lighter to darker to lighter. 12 seconds to dry. Scrubby of the medium shows cut, uh, tone variation, which we got. The medium showed, or extra fine showed none, which we got none. And the smear test you could recover if you smeared while you were writing. To have a range of experience with this ink, all of the writing samples are done with a Jinhao 159 with a 1.1 stub, a Jinhao X450 with a medium, and a Jinhao X750 with an extra fine. Then, a Waterman graduate with a fine nib was inked up, used for a day, and used to take the notes for this video. Let's look at the second writing sample done on 52 GSM Tomoe River. No bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade. The extra fine is quite a bit lighter than the stub with. No feather spread, halo sheen, it has shading. Brown goes dark to light, fox goes light to dark, quick goes dark to light to dark, 12 seconds to dry. Medium is the same tone as the extra fine with no feather spread, halo sheen, and yes, it shades as quick goes dark to light to dark to light to dark, and brown goes dark to light to dark. Very nice, 19 seconds to dry. The scrubby for both don't show much color variation, though we are seeing it in the writing, and the smear test, I don't think you could recover if you smeared while you were writing, not on this paper. I agree with Vita. There's a lot to learn by doing multiple chromatographies. The one on the left is done the way it's supposed to be done. A line of ink is put down and then it's put into water for 10 to 15 seconds. And we see that this ink very much formed a line very quickly and not a lot of that ink is pushing its way up, giving a hint of just how permanent this ink might be. The one on the right was allowed to dry for 10 minutes, and in 10 minutes, it completely bonded with the paper and doesn't want to budge at all, perhaps, meaning it's gonna be very permanent. The next writing sample is done on 80 GSM Rhodia dot pad. No bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade. The extra fine is a bit lighter than the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, it does shade as brown goes darker to lighter. Quick is a very dark word compared to lazy, even though lazy goes dark to light and seven seconds to dry. Medium is the same tone as the extra fine with no feather spread, halo sheen, no shading here though, 11 seconds to dry. The scrubby of the extra fine shows some color variation, which we got. The medium shows some, but we got none. And the smear test, believe it or not, you could recover it if you smeared while you're writing. I think this shows much better in person than on camera. I'll know when I get into editing. Resistance tests are done to see how this ink can be expected to perform on the page, and more importantly, how hard it may be to clean from your pen. The smear is allowed to dry for three days before testing it. Looking at the highlighter, there is no worry if you have a bottle of this ink that you want to use as a note taker, you could, because it's not gonna budge. Hashtag expensive notes. Water did nothing to move this ink, neither did pen flush. One third bleach solution, ha! It laughed at it and smacked it down into place. While this ink bonded very easily with the paper, it didn't bond with the pen. It only took water to get it out of that Waterman graduate. It didn't hold on to the converter, nothing. It cleaned out as easily as the Waterman Serenity Blue or Florida Blue, whichever, I always get confused. The next writing sample is done on Twisby notebook paper. We have no bleeding, no ghosting. 
The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade. The extra fine is a bit lighter than the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen. It shows shading in that the top line of writing looks a bit darker than the bottom line of writing. I don't understand why that is, but there's six seconds to dry. Medium is a bit lighter than the extra fine with no feather spread, halo sheen, decent shade. Fox goes lighter to darker, jumps goes dark, or sorry, jumps. Brown goes dark to light to dark. Not bad, lazy goes darker to lighter, 10 seconds to dry. Scrubby for both does show a little bit of color variation, though it's better in the medium. And the smear test, you could recover if you smeared while you were writing. For the inks tested, the average viscosity was 2.5, with the realm of normal being from 2.1 to 2.9. Mont Blanc's 90 Years Gray has a viscosity of 2.14, making it normal. Now, if you're interested in how the viscosity and all of that stuff's done, there's a link to that video down in the description. It's down, right down there, just there. The next writing sample is done on monokaki paper. No bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen, or shade. The extra fine is a little bit lighter than the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade, and nine seconds to dry. Medium is the same tone as the extra fine with no feather spread, halo sheen, or shade. 12 seconds to dry. The scrubby for both are showing almost no color variation because we really get none, but the smear test, you couldn't recover it here if you smeared while you were writing. For the inks tested, the average dry time was 17 seconds, with the realm of normal being from 13 to 21 seconds. Mont Blanc's 90 Years Gray has an average dry time of 10 seconds, making this a pretty fast drying ink. The last writing sample is done on Leustrum 1917 paper. We have no bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen, or shade. The extra fine is quite a bit lighter than the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, or shade, and six seconds to dry. Medium is just a tad darker than the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade, and nine seconds to dry. Now, the scrubby for the extra fine shows a little color variation left to right, and we really don't see it. The medium shows, I wanna say none, but it actually shows just a little bit, but we don't see any there either. And the smear test, I don't think you could recover it if you smeared while you were writing. Instead of finding inks that look like Mont Blanc's 90 Years Gray, I'd prefer to find an ink that complements its color on the page. Being a nice neutral gray the way it is, I wanted to go with a very vibrant turquoise, and I chose Monte Grappa's turquoise. Now, you can choose any complement color you want. Down in the description are links to all those playlists for you to be able to check out. So what do I think of Mont Blanc's 90 Years Gray? It's a gray, not the gray tone I like, which is pencil gray. It does shade well, and performance may be enough to elevate this as an ink. I like it a lot of tone variation from almost black to gray, but I don't like the grays to be too black. This one's pretty good. So what nib and pen will give the best writing experience with this ink? A medium to dry, medium or fine nib will really put down a nice tone, give very nice shading, and for what would become an expensive bottle to purchase, really help that bottle last longer so that you could enjoy it more. I hope you got something out of this video, and in the next video, we're gonna take a look at a shimmering ink from Diatramentis, Velvet Black Gold.